I had never been more excited for a TV show coming than the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I, I, I'd never been more excited for a show coming. I, I, I was ludicrously excited, could not wait. I was on pins and needles. Anne and I went to a movie theater to watch the first two episodes. And as I said in my out of the theater response, I almost walked out. Now, I ended up not hating the series the way a lot of people did, but it was a disappointment to me. It would had been my most anticipated thing, television show ever up until that point. And I ended up not hating it, but disappointed. Nearly walked out of the debut of it in a movie theater. So now comes along Shogun, a show I had truly been waiting almost all my life to see. But would I end up being as disappointed as I was with Rings of Power? And the answer is no! This show rules! Oh my God, I could not believe, like I was so ready to be disappointed, so ready to be disappointed. But Ann and I sit down to watch it in our little theater room and the text come up. First of all, the scenery, the settings are breathtaking and gorgeous. The, the performances are great. You instantly feel immersed in the 1600s feudal Japan. Like you feel like you're just thrust right into it. Hiroyuki Sonata is the man. The, and you know what? There's not a lot. I, I already know I can hear the same people who maybe Dune doesn't work for them. There are not enough sword fights, not enough explosions. I, I, I get that. But the drama of it, the intrigue of it, the, the honor, the, like, I'm just watching every second of this, and I'm just like, I can't believe I'm watching this. Like, I cannot believe I am watching this. And the way I felt about Dune in the sense of it's not possible to make this iteration any better. It's not possible to, to make an adaptation that is better than what Denis Villeneuve did with, with Dune. Not possible to make a Dune iteration, as good as that is what I mean. And as I'm watching this, and granted, it's only two episodes, just two episodes in. I think there's going to be ten. Just two episodes in, I'm like, it's just not possible to make an adaptation of Shogun better than this. Now, now granted, there have been other shows that have started strong for me that I ended up not liking by the time it got to the end, right? I really like the debut episode of Obi-Wan. I really like the first episode of She-Hulk. Look where those went. So I'm not going to get too carried away yet. Who knows if the rest of this will be good. But Rob, I, I was watching this so ready to be as disappointed as I was with the Lord of the Rings show. And every syllable, every line of dialogue, the dude having to slaughter his own infant baby son because he spoke out of turn. The, uh, it, I'm just, I, I was lost. The, the dude getting boiled alive. Like the, the, you felt the horror of that. And just like cutting away, the brilliance of cutting away to other places around the village, just having to hear the screams and stuff like that. The, the sense of honor, like even like this one dude is a total jack off, killed his crew member, threw him in boiling water, but he sees him risking his own life to save somebody. And then when he thinks he's died, he doesn't cry. He doesn't whine. He's like, nope. He accepted his fate, pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself. I mean, it's just, and the way, oh, the dude, they, I don't know the actor's name who's playing John Blackthorne. Yeah, I don't either. No. Oh my God, he's so good in this. But it all comes down to Hiroyuki Sonata for me. Like this dude, so good in it. Hiroyuki Sonata, so good in it. I could not have asked for this to be any better. And it is it is one of the best debuts to a show I've seen maybe in the last five years. It's I would Cosmo. say, what's that? It's Cosmo Jarvis. That's Place. the dude's name? I thought you were going to say Cosmo Black Kramer. John Blackthorne. Okay. Yeah. Well, he reminds me, Anne was saying, he reminds me a little bit of Tom Hardy. And he's, she, she's right. There's a little Tom Hardy in there. But Cosmo is fantastic. When I think of like the last four or five years of series that had this strong of a launch, I'm going to think of House of the Dragon, which from episode one, we were completely hooked. I'm going to think of The Last of Us, which right from episode one, I was completely hooked. And I'm going to think of... Shogun. I, I don't know that there's a show that has started stronger. I mean, my all-time favorite favorite strong start was the television, the NBC show Heroes. Like that right from episode one. Like that that's the greatest start ever. But I think in the last five years, I don't think there's been a show that has started much stronger than this. 
I loved it. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than a third on my cell bill than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash cam. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Rob, you had a chance to watch Shogun, the first two episodes last night. What did you make of it? The original Shogun, I, Claudius, Shogun, and the Winds of War are my favorite miniseries of all time. And Shogun, to me... Uh, you know, once I read Shogun, the first thing I did was run. I was 13 years old when I saw it. I ran and got James Clavell's 1,200-page novel, you know, that Shogun is based on, and I tore through that book. Yeah, King Rat, Taipan. I mean, I, um, I, I love this miniseries so much, and, John, with the kinds of things, we've seen good things, we've seen bad things. I have to tell you, I, I started this show. I wouldn't even say that I was going to give it a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I was already, I mean, I'm so primed, like at Star Wars has taught me not to be excited over something I love. This quickly <laughs> uh, dispelled any notions I had of not liking the show. <laughs> I was blown away. I was sitting there and I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I'm like, this is beyond any expectation that I had. Beyond the stars. And look, whenever I see something good, I think to myself the same thing on TV. I'm like, why can't Star Trek be like this? Because, <laughs> because the reason I love the original Shogun was because it seemed to me to be a Star Trek story where a human being goes to an alien world and gets completely immersed. And I'll tell you something. You know when this show won me over? When I was like, oh, my God. When the because this was not in the original Shogun in the in the miniseries. Yeah, there are changes. They, yeah, they made some changes. changes, but the scene where the the samurai go on board the English ship. Yeah, right know, at the, the beginning, Dutch ship, right the, near the beginning. Yeah, right in the beginning. They board the ship, and it showed them coming because that was the flip side of the aliens seeing what the Earth ship would be. You know, if it was right. Star Trek. Yeah, and when they're looking around and. And I felt, because in the original Shogun, you're like, you're with the West. <laughs> Gray Fox, show, show Trek. Trek. <laughs> but that was, here was something that immediate. I thought this was a brilliant idea because it immediately made you understand that in the original Shogun, we were always seeing it from our point of view. But the, 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 the samurai were like, these alien barbarians, we don't want them. Like, were they here? So you got the flip side of what they were thinking right up front. So it created, you knew what kind of brutality was coming, but you respected them more. You weren't just horrified. And I'm like, that was a brilliant change because it showed that both civilizations have value, which I thought was a really interesting way to go. Because who doesn't love the Klingons? Oh, yeah. I like, I, well, without giving too much context, just when the one guy says to Blackthorn, if you think these people are all savages, go up on deck and take a look at Osaka and then come back down here and tell me we're the ones who are the civilized world. I mean, it was it was a beautifully done moment. Yeah, it was all, so good. Everything about this, the way it was shot, I mean, somebody said on the live that they love the way that Vancouver played Japan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and it's true, but, you know, it's, it's kind of similar um, uh, foliage and things like that. It was absolutely convincing. The production design, the costumes are incredible. Everything about, I mean, the only thing this thing lacks is Toshiro Mifune, but you don't miss it. Um, I, it's so good, <laughs> and and the girl from um, Monarch, so good. She, and I was worried because Yoko Shimada in the first Shogun. I mean, I still hear her voice. Do you want to pillow? Yes, I do. Um, I love her, and but uh, she's oh, and, great. And by the way, you shall refer to me as Mariko Sama. As I, 
I almost had Ray redo our lower third names today. John Campia Sama. I wanted to put that in there today, but it's so um, good, man. I, I like you. I, I mean, now the potential for disappointment. <laughs> Better like the the bar is so high for me. I'm like, who would have thought we would get a, a, a Dune and Shogun? You know, previous adaptations. But to get new adaptations of things that I've loved for so long, oh my God. Shio wrote the John Campia show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny if that's what you <laughs> they did. Might have been the John Campia show. So good. Ah, uh, hi. Uh, I, I mean, oh my God. Oh my God, it's so good. I, I just, I, I, and again, like Dune, like Dune, I don't think Shogun is going to be for <laughs> Shomil Militude. Very Shomil Militude. <laughs> Good I job, don't Marcus. think Shogun is going to be for everyone, right? It will not be to everyone's taste. It, it won't. That's the beautiful thing about the art. It's great because those are the people I don't have to like. <laughs> but I'm so we're narrowing it down. It's like we're Shogun narrowing it down more and more, more every day. <laughs> oh my God, guys. This show is so good. It's already been on TV for like 30 hours. Why haven't you watched it? And it's been in production for like 100,000 years. Well, I mean, remember, <laughs> they announced this show in the same Disney Investors Day call that they announced Fantastic Four, that they announced um, like several Star Wars movies that never came to pass. Uh, that I mean, it, it was like four or five years ago they announced it, and it's finally here. I can't it's believe so it. It's so good, dude. It's so freaking good I can't, anyway. you know and, and i hope people go and pick up the book because yeah. that book is incredible people are going to look at it and go i'm not going to read that By get James it on Clavel. kindle so you don't know how heavy it is all right guys what did you guys think of it did you have a chance i mean it's been out for a while now did you guys have a chance to watch the first two episodes of shogun if so what did you think if not what are you what kind of choices are you making with your life <laughs> go and watch it it's absolutely incredible. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campion Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.